What we're going to be going over here is private not-for-profit accounting for what they call VHWOs. Now the VHWO, that stands for Voluntary Health and Welfare Organizations. And when you see this here, word voluntary health, you may think of hospitals here. Well, that wouldn't include hospitals. Hospitals would have their own accounting here, or non not-for-profit accounting. So let's understand what this voluntary health and welfare organizations would be here. Now, they would include organizations such as the Red Cross, the United Way, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and so forth here. And when you're talking about these type of organizations, they really depend heavily here on donations and contributions to provide the services that they do. And when we're talking donations and contributions here, it could be the donations of uh, a volunteers' time here, as well as, as well as donations of money and other resources here. So when we're dealing with this not-for-profit accounting here for these voluntary and health and welfare organizations, we have to start out here with our funds that would be included here for those VHWOs here. So first off, you have to determine the funds used and any restrictions on the fund assets. And when we're talking about these uh, voluntary organizations here, Really, this is what comes into play here. We're going to be looking at, I've got it laid out here with the different funds that would be included here. But along with those funds, the major, uh, you have to make some major classifications here on your resources and assets here and how they're used. And what, what many times when they're donated here, there's stipulations put on on how the donations or the contribution should be spent, the money should be spent. So we have to, we have these fund asset categories here and we'll look at them in greater detail here when we we'll talk about exactly what they are. But we're going to have the unrestricted assets here, temporarily restricted, again those are the assets or the resources here, and then over here we're going to have the permanent restrictions here on the assets or resources and how they're used or spent. So we really got these three different classifications that we're going to have to work with here. And we'll expand on that in, in, in detail a little later here. But when we're talking about restrictions, really we're uh, stipulating uh, either it's internally here or a third party, uh, the contributor here or donor stipulates in exactly how the assets should be spent or the money should be spent. Uh, on the resources that they contribute or the contributions. Okay, so let's just look at our funds here and we'll get into the definition here on what these would include later here, but just so you understand our different funds here as, as far as their fund asset category. So the current, they're gonna be a fund called the Current Unrestricted Fund here and that of course would be unrestricted assets. That is funding that can be spent, there's no restrictions on how those funding should be spent. And then, or the dollar spent. And then you're gonna have your current restricted fund here. That's gonna include both unrestricted assets here and temporarily restricted assets. And then we're gonna have the plant fund that would be for land, buildings, and those type of uh, fixed assets here. You could both have an under, the unrestricted assets, temporarily restricted assets, or permanently restricted assets. And then the endowment fund, that's big contributions that were given here and they're set up in a particular fund here, investments and so forth. You're gonna have either temporary restrictions on them or they could be permanently restricted, the funding. And then you have also your agency or custodial funds and uh, there really aren't any, there are restrictions, but there's no restricted restrictions here as far as uh, our fund assets and how they'd be handled. That's a different. Those would be uh, really your um, operate oper some of your operations here that really don't belong to the organization. There would be payroll withholding taxes and so forth. And then you'd have your investments here, pooling really of investments here, and those would be operate. Uh, you'd have to handle those here. And again, we're not setting up any restrictions here on uh, the assets and how you're going to spend them here. You're just making your investments here. All right. So when you're dealing with these not-for-profit accounting for voluntary health and welfare organizations, you're going to have to deal with your different funds here. And that's how you're going to be classifying uh, your contributions and how you're spending your contributions. They're going to have to be spent here under uh, these, you're going to have to classify your different fund names here and by 
the fund asset categories that we just looked at. Unrestricted either temp or temporary restricted assets or, and resources or permanently restricted. Okay, so next let's go down here. And this is the case here where you're gonna have, to, where is your fund, you're gonna be looking, where is your funding coming from here as revenues and how is uh, these uh, revenue or these, uh, exp whatever you're uh, having a revenues or contributions here, how are they being spent here? Okay, so when you're, again, when you're dealing with this not-for-profit uh, uh, voluntary health and welfare organizations, you're gonna have to make a, dis we're starting out with our revenue here. You're gonna have to make a distinction between revenue and support when you're setting up your different accounts here. And what we mean by both of them here, let's just look at what we mean by revenue here. So uh, what would be included here would be like membership dues for belonging to the particular organization, or they're pr providing some program service fees here of some sort that the organization may provide. And then like sales, publications, and supplies of the, the organization is putting out here. And then there would be investment revenue for any investments that the organization is holding. So you can understand uh, revenue here. You gotta make the distinction between your revenue and now we'll be looking at the support. So you can see what's coming in here as revenue. And we're talking about this distinction. This is how you're gonna have to set up your different accounts and you're gonna have to do your uh, re fund reporting and, uh, and operation or of the organization and you're gonna have to class them, classify them with these different accounts here. And those would be difference would be our revenues here. Now moving over to support, this is what we're talking about public support. Now under that, you would have your contributions coming in, any special events that the organization would be performing here, then the legacies and bequests, those are the big contributions that uh, large contributors are making major contributions here to the organization. And then you're gonna have the pledges in campaigns. So they're looking at monies, monies being pledged here for the organization for a particular, a particular purpose or campaigns that the organization would be having. So clear, you have to make, when you're setting up and doing your reporting and setting up your accounts here, you have to make the distinction. What you're looking at is revenue here versus the support here that the organization has. And we're talking about public support. Okay, so that's the case here is where is that money coming from here now let's go down here and now how is this money being spent here so the organization is is in a in the business here to provide uh, to provide uh, services here to the community here so this is the case here when you're setting up your accounts again you have to make the distinction here between your expenses and what we're going to be talking about expenses here again just like we talked about the revenues and support here you have to look at the difference classify your accounts here uh, for your expenses your expenditures and you're going to have expenditures here for what they call the program services here now that's really the function of the organization or its primary mission here this is uh, what they're providing here as services to the outside here, either locally or nationally here, whatever. But those are the services that they're going to be providing. And it, I'm, none of these lists here are exhausted. I'm just showing, giving typical examples here so you get an idea of what's going on. So for program services, you might have research, education, community services, and so forth. Those would be under the the primary mission here, what the organization is providing here. And then you'd have the supporting services. That's really uh, to the management and general expenses here for operating the organization. So, you know, they have expenses here. This is to support really their mission or their program services. So you're going to pay the management and the workers here you know, and other general expenses. And then you're going to have supporting service. You're going to have some fundraising uh, expenses here for your uh, for your pledges and your ca your campaigns and so forth and then you'll have all your rent and your other expenses here to operate the organization so you have when you're talking about expended expenses and you're doing your reporting and setting up your accounts you're going to have to uh, differentiate 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 them here between your program services that's what you're providing 
as your primary mission or the services that this organization is providing and then supporting services that's what it costs here to run that organization okay so that's the case here when we're looking at uh, we have to make that distinction for our revenues here and our expenses okay so now let's go up and let's just look at our definitions here really the fun functions here we mentioned we went through those different funds here now let's just understand what would be included in them here so now we got the current unrestricted fund that's where you'd have no external restrictions and it would be available for current operations operations here the organization at the discretion of the governing board here of the organization then you're going to have the current restricted fund that's where assets assets here are received from the outside for current operations and uh, the purpose here would have to be specified by the donor usually the donor doesn't have to but many a times they specify how those uh, their funding or the funds that they're contributing to the organization here should be spent so when we're talking about current here we're talking of for the unrestricted is both current operations again at the discretion here of the governing board of the organization versus current restrictions those are for current operations and it would be restrictions imposed by a third party or outside party here the donor the donor would put some restrictions on them and then moving down to our plant fund again land buildings and so forth here and that this is where the act activity would be related to the fixed assets and that would be including the acquisition disposal and so forth so they're taking care of all the care of their fixed assets uh, for the organization's building land and so forth and this is the case here where the fund itself carries fixed assets and the long-term debt now in a governmental accounting those fixed assets and uh, long-term debt here are carried outside of these funds for the their funding but when we're talking about the not-for-profit here in this case uh, the VH uh, WOs here you include those here your all your depreciation and so forth here and long-term debt if you have any you would have long-term debt in the plant fund itself and then moving down to our endowment fund this would be gifts and bequests those large uh, contributions from uh, wealthy uh, donors here and they would come with many legal restrictions I'm just showing the or they could have many legal restrictions now I'm just showing and a brief description here of what each of these funds do and now we get into the agency or custodial fund that acts for the assets do not that really don't belong to the organizations they have to pay payroll taxes and other pro property taxes and so forth but that's how where they would be handling all those other costs here uh, uh, really they're gonna have to transfer whatever their uh, costs here that they have to for you know federal state payroll withholding maybe health insurance and those type of costs here and then our investment po pooling here that's really uh, the organization if it's a real large organization like the Red Cross United Way they may have different investments and each one of them here the district or the local may throw it into one big investment account here handled by the national office or something like that so this is where you're going to combine your investments into various uh, from different funds you may have different funds here and obviously you're gonna have different funds you combine you can combine your investments here into one group here and it allows for flexibility here on investing those assets or those resources here at a lower cost so investment pooling really talks about just the investments that you have now let's go down here and let's go back and let's look at that unrestricted temporary restricted and permanently restricted uh, uh, classification here for our fund asset categories under our funds so when we're talking about this temporary here usually we're talking about temporary donor restrictions or third-party restrictions here and what we mean by that is again the donors are restricting how those funds should be spent here and what's what services should be provided here under the funds that they're providing and we'll just the temporary obviously the permanent one the permanent restrictions those stay with here but when we're talking those stick with the 
the funding that was received here or the uh, contributions that were received. But when we're talking about our temporary restrictions here, those can be uh, be transferred to unrestricted assets here. So we really got three different classes, but what we're dealing with, uh, we have to deal with this, mainly with this temporary restricted assets that we're going to be looking at here. So what do we mean by temporary restrictions here? This is, and this, the really, let's look at it in these terms here. The restriction, temporary restriction expires one here, expires when the stipulated time has elapsed it may be that the donor says, okay, you have to spend it for a certain period of time here, the funding I've given you here, and when it elapsed, then you can uh, either leave it as a temporary restricted or move it into an unrestricted asset. Or B here, you stipulate, uh, the stipulated purpose has been fulfilled. A uh, donor says, uh, okay, or it could be internal, internally here as well. Here they may state that it, 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 you have a temporary restriction, but let's say from the donor's perspective here, when you're talking about uh, the restriction here, uh, say for example, he says, okay, I donated all this money here, I wanted to provide a certain service, or I wanted to build a new building, or what have you with the money that I contributed here to the organization. Now, when the building is completed or the services have been provided and there's still some money left here, then you have that opportunity, the organization has that opportunity to move it out of the restricted or these temporary restricted category into an unrestricted. Essentially, they could use the uh, money or assets or resources as they need here without any restrictions. And then thirdly here, your restriction can expire here when the useful life of the asset or the whatever here, your resource here, the donated has ended. So you have useful life and it's it's worn out here whatever your asset or your resource it is it's worn out it has no more useful life then there you could get rid of it here uh, it wouldn't be temporarily restricted here for the designated purpose here and then you can when you when all these expires here again you can reclassify it to in un, in unrestricted after the uh, restrictions here expire. So that's the key here. We're dealing with this temp these temporary restrictions here on our fund assets or resources here and if it expires here you have the opportunity to move those temporary restricted assets into unrestricted assets here for our funds. And just going through our funds again, remember we had that current unrestricted fund here and that was unrestricted assets and then we have our restricted, current restricted, that's for current really operations here is what we're talking about both temporarily restricted here for donor when we mean by that here is the donor put some restrictions on it here for current operations you have to use the dollars I donated here uh, for current operations and then you got your plant fund here those are your uh, your fixed assets essentially you could have donor could put a permanent restriction here on how those land and buildings should be used or could be a temporary restriction or could be unrestricted itself. And then the endowment fund. Well, you either have, you could, many times there's a permanent restriction set on the large contributions or donations and how they should be spent. And then you could have a temporary restriction on it too. And if it's temporarily restricted here and if it expires per any of those categories up here, uh, well, you really aren't going to have any unrestricted. It's, Usually there isn't going to be any unrestricted assets. That's what I'm telling you here. Things could expire here, but you're, it's still going to be temporarily restricted when you're talking about those endowment funds. And then, of course, the agency custodial funds, that's for you know acting as an outside, collecting money for some third party here. There, when we, yeah, it has restrictions, but the assets or the resources don't have any restrictions on us restrictions on them. We got to pay the monies out as required here, but we don't have any uh, restrictions here in the assets. And then investment pooling again, that's just lumping all those investments together here and trying to generate money off of them. And those really wouldn't, we don't set up here as unrestricted, temporary, and permanent restrictions. But you're going to see, we'll look at that next year and setting up those accounts here. But when you're dealing with this private not-for-profit uh, 
accounting here for these voluntary health and welfare organizations here. Your accounting really focuses around how you collect your money here, those that revenue and the support, and also your pro, and your, how you spend it for program services or supporting services. But then, all many of the accounts, most of the accounts that you're going to be looking at are going to be, have some identify. They have to be identified here as really unrestricted, temporarily restricted, or permanently restricted here. So that's what you're going to have to deal with. And then. Uh, before we move on here and look at how some of our basic accounting entries here, we have to note here uh, when you're when you're dealing with these voluntary health and welfare organizations, you're going to use normal accrual accounting, not modified accrual. Government agencies often use modified accrual here, but just use your normal accrual accounting here when you're dealing with it, and then uh, when you re you'd be reporting your contributions and your investments at their fair value. So those are key things here when you're talking about your basic accounting here. You're going to have the normal accrual accounting and really not modified accrual and you're going to be looking at reporting contributions and investments at their fair value. Okay so next we'll move on here and just look at really some basic accounting here when it comes to setting up our different accounts. Now let's just get a basic understanding on how we'd set up our accounts here. So first let's looking at our accounting here for the funding coming in. And remember we said we had to make a distinction here between the revenue items here and the support items. And we had a revenue here, that would be our membership dues, program services, and so forth here. And that would include some investment revenue here. And then we have to break it out here uh, for support items. That would be the public support, contribution, special events, legacies, bequests, and pledges, campaigns, and so forth. But what we want to do here, and I'm just showing it in T-account form, what you have to do is, again, break out your revenue items here from your support items. And what you would do here in each account here, each account you're going to have, you can have many revenue items here, but you have to identify each of those accounts for each of those items here. So what you want to do here, you want to have the specific, specify the specific account that you're talking about here and any restrictions on those accounts being they're unrestricted, restricted, or permanently restricted here. So when you set up your account, you have to identify whether it's a revenue item here and make sure you identify exactly what the specific account is and then along with that identification you have to put the restrictions you have on it. And then the same thing here for the support items. You have to break those out here separately and just again remember when we're talking about the, the accounting here you have to specify the specific account that you're talking about here in your for your support items and again whether it's unrestricted, restricted, or they have some permanent restrictions on them. And then the other thing here, um, the, the res restrictions here would be for the specific purpose. You have to put down the specific purpose that you have those restrictions on. So these account, their titles here become quite lengthy here, but you have to keep track of them here to determine your, uh, for example, your revenue or support, how it's going to be spent here. So you have to keep track of them, uh, really the specific purpose along with the specific restriction that you'd have on here, like for donor restrictions. And then the other thing here, you would either re remember you record your cash or your receivables and any allowance for uncollectibles. We're using normal accrual accounting here when we're talking about these not-for-profits here and in this case. But just remember, remember you have remember to be very specific here on your account here on setting up your different accounts and we just looked at the revenues here in a support now let's move over to secondly here same thing here where we're going to be looking at the accounting for the dollars going out again you have to make the distinction between your expenses here and those would be your program expenses that we talked about before here, research, education, community services. This is just an example here, but this is really the function of the organization and its primary, it's really primary missions. It's being provided through these program services and those would be expenses here. Again, you want to identify the use here and the fund here. And uh, we'll get it, we'll be the same here when we're talking about our expenses. You have to be very specify the specific account that you're talking about here and any restrictions here it being unrestricted, restricted, or 
permanently restricted. So you really have to be very specific here. You can't just be uh, mixing up funds here because uh, you have to keep track of them separately here for your program services and then your performing services. But within each one of these services here, you have to be very specific on the account that you're talking about. And you have to tie in the restrictions because you just, if it's restricted in a certain manner here, you just can't pay monies out of the uh, particular account here if there is a restriction. And that's really tied into uh, the, what we received here as revenue and other support items. So you have to keep track of them here. You have to determine the use here and the fund that it would be included in here. And you would include, remember to include any restrictions here, just looking at our different accounts here. So just to refer to Ken here, again, be very specific on your account and any restrictions that you would have here. And then the restrictions would, you have to just list the restrictions for this specific purpose here, like the donor restrictions. And then remember, you can pay only out, can pay monies only out of the fund dollars as it's restricted here. So if there's a temporary restriction on it, you have to pay uh, based on that temporary restriction. If that temporary restriction is removed, then you can move it into an unrestricted account here and probably pay generally how you want out of it. But remember here, be very specific and you have to include any restrictions here and you have to know where that uh, where that money is been, going to be coming from based on the uh, revenue or support that you received. Okay, and while we're talking about it, let's just go down and look at some other key features here when we're talking of this not-for-profits here. And this is the case here we're going to have some, not getting into any great detail here, but we talked about that moving from unrestricted or to restricted funding here to an unrestricted case here. So this is where you're going to have asset or resources reclassification here. So uh, say for example expenses were made in compliance with some donor restrictions and now the funding here, uh, you're funded by the restricted resources here so they had a temporary restriction on the net assets or the resources here. Now that restriction has, uh, that temporary restriction here has been met here and then it can be released, you release it with some re reclassification entry. So the only point is I want to say that we have these reclassification of restricted assets and you have to take care of that and look at it in the detail depending on your restrictions here. So when a donor restrictions have been fulfilled here in this case, you have some accounts set up here. We're going to have a reclassification out uh, from a temporary restrict restriction of some resources or some assets here and then you're going to have to have an account set up here for re reclassification in here for the unrestricted uh, those funds going into an unrestricted case. So just remember you're going to have to set up different uh, titles here and you're going to have to make those uh, uh, going to have to make those reclassifications here based on reclassification out. So that would be the specific account title and then you'd have to, for, for whatever resource that is, and then it would be a reclassification in here into the unrestricted case. So this is the case here where you're going to release some restricted assets through reclassification. So that happens quite often here in the accounting, but you're going to have to look at it in detail and determine just how to do that reclassification of any restricted assets. Okay. And then finally, let's just go over here, uh, again, reporting contributions and investments at the fair value. That would be including any changes here in fair value. So for example, let's just look at the endowment fund here where you're going to be reporting some investments or assets here at their fair value. So let's just say, for example, here we, we received an endowment here, we reported it at its fair value, but now we come along here and the investments have a carrying value here of, now let's just say $412,000, their fair value is $400,000. So we would have an investments account set up here, and along with that we have to set up some net depreciation account here for any decreases in the fair value of that investment, or we'd have an account set up here as net appreciation here for the fair value of the investment for any increases in those assets. So let's just say our investment account here, say for example we had a debit here of $412,000, that's its current carrying value, 
but it now has a fair value of $400,000, those investments, so we're going to have to make some adjustments. So we're going to adjust, make our adjustment directly to our investments account here, credit it here, or reduce it here by $12,000. So we uh, carrying value here would be reduced from $412,000 down to its fair value of $12,000. So we make our adjustments directly in our investments account here and then you have to set up either a net, like I mentioned here, a net depreciation for a decrease in that fair value or net appreciation for an increase in the fair value. So you make your adjustments directly to the investment account here but then you account for that adjustment through these other these appreciation or depreciation accounts. So in this case we had the credit or reduction here in our investments by $12,000 so the debit would go to net depreciation, debit or increase our, our net depreciation. So we see what's going on here with our investments account. We keep track of, we make our recordings directly in our investments account here for any increases or decreases, but we also have to make adjustments outside of that account here, either net depreciation, in this case it was that $12,000 uh, decrease here in the fair value, and if it appreciated here, we would, in this case, had it gone, it had been just the opposite, it, say it gone from 412000 up to 424000 then we would have had a net appreciation here, credit it for $12,000. So we had an adjustment here to our appreciation. The only point as you want to make here when you're talking about these non-profits here in this case, you have to make uh, adjustments to the fair value for any investments. You record them at their fair value, and then you have to go back and look at any changes in the fair value. So you're reporting them properly here uh, at their fair value. Okay, so that's just b the basic entries that we'd make here when we're talking about the, the non-profits, this case in case of those welfare and health organizations. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.